sell my arch piece of chaos. This is your, your king of the night, Vincent Valentine EX Turk. And I want to talk about the city of Gralia, where people lose their dreams and their souls. But no, this is a discussion talking about the city of Gralia. And what is it? It's the Niflheim Empire's base of operations, where they use magic, where they use demons and kidnap civilians to make magitech, and pretty much accelerate the disease to make these soldiers that you see on the ground right here, using unlawful experiments with Chief Scientist Beth Sissia Verstale. So people who don't know what where the Niflheim Empire comes from, they come from Gralia. Once that was once Gralia was once a uh, was a was, Gralia was once a prominent city, you know, one of the biggest cities back in the day until the scourge happened and changed everything. After Arden killed Shiva and froze most of Niflheim territory, you know. And then killed, and, and, and then Ifrit was slain by Bahamut, and then what was left of Bahamut, you know, before chapter 14, where he got resurrected by Arden using the trident, um, bah, um, um, Ifrit has cursed the volcano with the scourge, and each time the smoke goes into the sun, it amplifies the curse of the star scourge. But there's one city that is right next to Ravatos. Or should I say, Niflheim territory is close to Mount Ravatos than any other part of Lucis. So pretty much the curse of the Niflheim, of the Niflheim, cur Niflheim curse began in Niflheim. Because the volcano's smoke is closer to Gralia. And then on top of that... Shiva's body has been slain, causing the snowstorm at Glacia, and that's why it's called Glacia, which caused Niflheim people, N Niflheim Empire civilians, to starve, to die off slowly, or turn into demons. Those were the only three things. You know, the city was in a lot of debt because how poor it is. Because of Niflheim's, because because of what Arden did the did the Glacia to to push Idolus to agree with Arden's ideals, you know, to get Arden's to get Ar to get Arden to agree with um with his ideals using demons for their military. Arden needed to make a push, and that's why he killed Shiva and caused the caused a frozen. Wasteland that caused a lot of people poverty and everything. Even Lestalem looks nicer than Gralia. Gralia looks like an old city stuck in the 50s with a bunch of chemical plants. Now, when Idolus agreed with this, he put some of the scourge inside the plants, thinking that the you know thinking that if they make the military to do all this. That one day, Idolus will achieve the crystal and save his people. At least, that's what Arden, that, that's what Arden at least made him believe. So, you know, the once beloved emperor of Niflheim, Idolus Outercraft, has became a hated pariah because he's the one implying the scourge. Because Arden, you know, Arden has spoon-fed Idolus all his ideals. And Idolus really just wants to save his own people. Because they're on the brink of starvation, death, or turning into demons thanks to the Star Scourge. And thanks to Shiva's corpse, there's no way out of Gralia. Except if you're part of the Niflheim military. But civilians, they'd die in the cold lands. They would die instantly in the cold lands because how cold it was. The only reason why Prompto has not died... From that cold, because Prompto's part MT and a clone of Be uh, Verstale Bethsicia, you know. So, 
it makes sense that Prompto was still alive, but any ordinary civilian trying to get out of Gralia, anyone who tried to get out of Gralia to get out of the disease or anything, were always unlucky. And the train doesn't always go up there. The fact that, because the only time the train has gone up to Gralia is because of Biggs and, Wedge, Biggs and Wedge taking over the train while RNA evacuated every civilian ever from from Tenebrae, all that stuff. But nonetheless, from Tenebrae, Alticia, etc. But the but Grawl, yeah. So if, the, there's, I mean, if there were civilians, it'd be a rare case. It'd be a rare case if there's a civil, a regular civilian who's not an MT or who's not an MTRA to survive out in the cold. So there's no way for anyone in Niflheim to get out of there. So they either had to be infected or die from starvation because of how poor this country is. Even Idola said it himself to Regis. His cities compare. Come, his cities, no, his cities are. I forgot what it was. Are, you know, lesser in comparison to his cities. Because at this point, Insomnia is the richest country. At this point. But thanks to Idolus feeding into Arden's mess, this amplified the Star Scourge to new levels and turned everything vacant. The vacancy of the of Gralia is so high. The only people that exist in Gralia at this point now are the Emperor himself and the Niflheim military. You know, are the only. At this point, the only people that exist and live now is Idolus in the form of Feralis. Because the Scourge has gotten to him so badly, and he's unable to control it no more. Idolus actually loses his clothing. Idolus loses his clothing and turns into Feralis. Feralis, Forest, or whatever you want to call that thing. That thing that comes at you in the dark when you're least expected. And each time it's darker, he can come through the walls of his own once kingdom when he was a human being. That's how messed up the Niflheim Empire is. And that's how it is. That's how messed up Arden is and the Niflheim Empire. That only thing exists are broken magic texts that are, like, are zombie-like now because they're broken. And... And pretty much Idolus in, for in forest form. And Arden, just to antagonize Noctis a lot further than he did before. This is the darkest place in one of the darkest cities. And like I said about the Star Scourge, the Star Scourge started from the Piteos Ruins. Ifrit got defeated by the Piteos Ruins and was sent into the volcano. Thus... The last act Ifrit did before he died, before his resurrection by Arden, was put the Star Scourge into the volcano. Thus, starting the Star Scourge. And because Gralia is closer to that area, area than any other places of Lucis, Gralia has got the Scourge, and alongside that, a frozen wasteland over it. So now it's just a haunted factory. The, the Magitech factory of Niflheim and Gralia is nothing more than a haunted ghost town filled with nothing but demons of all classes. And because Arden controls the Star Scourge, Iron Giants ravage the city. You know, those one demons that Idolus used against Ravis, they roam the city outside the Magitech factory. Outside the Magitech factory. Pretty much. Gralia is pretty much the most haunted place ever. Thanks to the Discourage disease. Especially the fact that the Emperor is now. Something else entirely. The Red Demon that follows you through the elevators. Follows you through walls if it's dark. It knows where you are. And knows what you're doing, and it knows any and 
it knows where you are at all times. There is no escape from the Magitech factory now. You either get strong enough to face this dark demon of disaster that was once the emperor of this place, or perish by his hands, or perish by the Star Scourge disease. Either way, this place is filled with intense darkness. As the more you progress, then you start to find out, then Arden will tell you how MTs are made. And finding out, all those demons you killed and those MTs you killed were once human. Including the red demon that follows you through the thing. In fact, the red demon was once the emperor of this place. A terrifying place where it just comes out of the wall. The origin of the uh, of the Star Scourge, the Pitios ruins, have traveled the Star Scourge in places that you would never expect. That's why it's not safe to go out at night, because night is is witching hour, and the night is when the demons from the Scourge will come after you. That's why everybody has to be in town and inside of a hotel or something like that, because. It's a terrifying, you know. It, it, you know, the, and then Gralia. It don't matter what hotel you're in. It don't matter if you have a little bit of lights on. There's a reason why. There's a reason why Gralia is now a ghost town. And not just because the Niflheim commanders and stuff like that has perished in battle. That's not it. It's because it's far too late. It's far too late for Idolus to figure that he was lied and manipulated by Arden all this time. The man who started to help start the Star Scourge. The man who killed the Glacia, thus freezing Niflheim territory so no one could get out of Gralia. Thus, having Ifrit perish in battle and... and, and put the scourge virus inside the volcano and since Gralia is closer to that area you know at least through the body bodies of ocean the scourge has infected Gralia Gralia was once a good city and now it's gone and there's nothing anyone can do now except stop the star scourge once and for all by the king's hand Noctis Lucius Kylium must defeat not only the Red Demon, but also the King of Darkness, Arden Lucius Kylium, the man responsible to settle all of this, to end the scourge once and for all, but at one cost. The cost, the cost of his life. The cost of his life is what Price Noctis, the King of Light, has to pay in order to stop the Star Scourge that was started by the King of Darkness, Arden Lucius Kylium. Many fallen soldiers walk your way. Many tears. Gralia is where everybody loses everything. And become monsters. Just like the king of darkness himself. Arden. Lucius. Kylium. And this all started in the Piteous Ruins. With Eos's death. Ephraim's anger and hatred toward human beings. Arden's hatred to the world because he couldn't become the ascended king and his brother who pretty much was for Eos's death he feels betrayed and thus Arden seeks the revenge against Lucius Kylium household by helping Ephraim with the scourge but the scourge started in one place before the Pitios ruins the same ruins that started the upstart of Gralia. 
the same ruins that you go through hell. And that's what Gralia 